Welcome back to Philosophy 104, World Views. I don't think that there's a single one of these 16 lessons that is as difficult as this one is for me to do. Uh, it's not difficult because it's painful. It's just difficult because it's so personal. <laughs> to understand the Islamic mindset, you cannot think as a Westerner and try to apply that to the Islamic mind. To understand Islam, you have to go deeper. Television, and you see somebody saying, oh, these, this is a war of cousins, the sons of Ishmael and the sons of Isaac. That's just logically impossible. Forget biblically impossible. Forget biblically impossible. Forget biblically impossible. In 1,300 years of history, let me ask you a question. In 1,300 years of Islamic history, name one period of time or one country where my people have existed peacefully alongside of anyone in any country where they've been the minority. In Islam, the founder is Muhammad. In Islam, the founder is Muhammad. From 570 AD until his death at 632, Muhammad is the core and the essence of Islam. Now, he was raised in Saudi Arabia, in a, in a place that was basically a crossroads of trade. And where he was raised, he had north, south, and east, west travel and trade routes. And he himself, he was a trader meaning that was his work, trade her. And he saw all these variant groups. From Africa, he saw the animists who worship trees and such, voodoo. And, uh, from the north, he saw the Hindus. He saw Christians and Coptics all over his land who were missionaries into his country. Muhammad receives a vision in a cave. The vision he receives on his 40th birthday is one that profoundly impacts him. As a matter of fact, hadith, which is the sayings and examples of Muhammad himself, the hadith records that he rolled around and roared like a camel and almost swallowed his tongue. And he asks, what he begins to teach is not a correction of Christianity, it's a radical departure therefrom. It's not a correction of Judaism, it's a radical departure therefrom. His In the Muslim mind, you say this shahada. There is only one God, Allah, and Muhammad is his final seal of the prophets. That is, uh, that's Abinadab, the shahada, the shahada, the shahada, the shahada. Salat zakat swan, the shahada. Salat zakat swan, the shahada. Salat zakat swan, 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 swan. Prayer, fasting, almsgiving. Prayer, well, of course, he'd seen the monks pray. And five times a day, you were to face, at the very beginning, you faced Jerusalem. But it, it changed later until they faced Mecca, the Kaaba. Fasting, during the month of Ramadan, you fast from sunrise to sunset, 40 days on the Lord. It's <laughs> Lent. <laughs> And then there's the Hajj, the pilgrimage to Mecca, to the beginning of Islam. Sounds an awful lot like the pilgrimages that the Catholics went on to Jerusalem, doesn't it? But I'm not comparing Islam to Catholicism. I'm saying Muhammad stole those concepts.
where he replaced Jesus. Jesus was not Messiah. Jesus was not Messiah. Not Messiah. إذ قالت الملائكة يا مريم إن الله يبشرك بكلمة منه اسمه المسيح عيسى بن مريم وجيها وجيها في الدنيا والآخرة ومن المقربين. No true Muslim would ever in a million years believe that the God of Christianity, the God of the Bible, and Allah of the Quran are the same God. I've had a, uh, multiple debates. I've never met one Muslim, not one, who's ever believed that the 99 names of terror and glory in the Quran are the same God as the intimate, personal, triune God of the Bible. Not one. Not one. Well then, if it's not the same God, how are we supposed to understand? I want to give you this as the apologetic. I hope you can follow. Islam is nothing but medieval Mormonism. That is, everything that Joseph Smith did in the 19th century, everything that Brigham Young did in the 19th century, Muhammad had already done back in the 6th century and the 7th century. As a matter of fact, the, this, the similarities are so profound that I'm going to take a little extra time just to show you what I'm talking about. For instance, both in Mormonism and in Islam, In Islam, there's only one person who has an absolute certainty that he's going to paradise. Muhammad even said in the hadith, he did not know where he was going. I mean, if the prophet, who's considered the exemplar, according to the 33rd chapter of the Quran, if the prophet cannot know, well, goodness gracious, who can know? A Muslim believes in blood, blood forgiveness. But you see, we believe that we must shed our own blood to find our own forgiveness. I point it out this way, and I say it as graphically as I can because I want it to get your attention. Jesus Christ strapped himself to a cross so that I wouldn't have to strap a bomb filled with shrapnel to my body. <laughs> if there's a woman in Islam that you know, she lives as a secondary inferior citizen in a system that subjugates her. Swan, 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 shahada, swan, 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 shahada, swan, sunrise to sunset, forty days, sunrise to sunset, forty days, sunrise to sunset, forty days, at swan, at swan, at swan.